This would be our 12th lesson in a series. Day one brings divine order out of the chaos of Genesis 1-2. It began bringing the earth from uninhabited to inhabited condition of Isaiah 45-18. The six days of the restoration of creation, which is identified in Genesis 1-1, shows the chronological order of God bringing order to the pre-Adamic earth. For example, you should write in your papers 1 Corinthians 14, 33, and 40, where it says God is a God of order. And what we had in verse 2 was disorder or chaos. The Holy Spirit, who was hovering over the earth of Genesis 1-2 is no longer hovering or moving over the earth as it was in Genesis 1-2, but is now, according to Psalms 104, verse 30, working to renew the face of the earth. For example, when you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. This has transpired by the time we get to day one. Today's lesson on day one light is going to continue with four additional ideas about day one light separating the light from the darkness. I want to remind you of a very important Hebrew biblical principle that sometimes we don't pay attention to just by reading the scriptures. Day one is a cardinal number, like you would say one, two, three, four. It is the only day like that. The rest of the days are ordinal numbers, like second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So what we have by seeing that is a chronological order. We est This established a chronological order. We have day one, that start is a starting point, and then you have a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth to the end of the creation restoration. The cardinal number of day one establishes a starting point of a chronological order. It is translated, it therefore it is translated one day. It is like in your scripture, it says one day, or we identify it as day one. However, it is not called day one until God's word work is completed. Notice that when God called it, you were, you were on 1-5. Agreed? Now, I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because after you, after you get through the six days of chronological order, right, day one, and then the second day, the third day, the fourth day of a chronological order. You have the seventh day, which is the rest of God. Right? Or the finished work and then the rest, right? The work is done and then there's the rest, R-E-S-T. Right? When you get through with day one, you have the finished work of the separation which starts this whole thing in movement. And that's really important. It's really important that in day five, he says, now we have one day. Day one. And now we have day one, is going to do day two, day three, and then we're going to have the we're going to have those three separate things is now going to move us into a completely different way of looking at creation by the solar system of day four. You're going to have was there something, Rick? Okay. So we got we've got the we got day one, two, and three is separate from 
the, the light business is separated from the solar system of day four, five, and six. Do you understand that? Well, you will. I'm just saying you do know that there's going to be, the first three days is different than the last three days. Well, I, just, I spent a whole hour on that. I just, I just want to make sure we understand that. You will, you will really get to point by the time we get to the solar system on day four. Point number two. After day one, the earth was no longer under the chaotic darkness of Genesis 1-2. It was there that God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now watch this. See, no, you probably don't pay any attention to, to the two separate ideas, how they work. Let there be light, right? He said, he said let there be light. He spoke that, right? He said, let there be light, and there was light. See the word let? That's a justice form of grammar. J-U-S-S-I-V-E is on your paper. See, a lot of times we just pass over that, and we go like, I mean, who stops to think about that except a guy like me? Is it? Because that's a adjusted form of grammar. Let there be light, and there was light. This is a passive, adjusted form of grammar of Hayah, a cal imperfect of Genesis 1 3. Now, Hayah, Hayah in the Hebrew is equivalent to Aimi in the Greek, the word is. And it's called an absolute status quo verb of existence. Those of you that are students of the Greek will, if you haven't, well, you haven't learned it yet, but you will learn it. All right? It's an absolute status quo verb. It's a very important verb. Haya is a very important verb in the Hebrew, like Aimi is in the Greek. All right? So the justice teaches, here's what, when he says, let there be light. The word let in the Hebrew is just a form of grammar. And what it teaches is the motive or the desire of the sovereign will of God. Now we know that when he says let there be light and there was light, that was the sovereign will of God. He spoke it and it was. Right? That's the way the Word of God works in your life. He speaks the Word into your life, and then the Word brings it to fulfillment. That's Romans 4.21. That is the application of 4.21. Hearing, believing, and applying, and then God does what He promised. You've really got to understand that. This justice really sets that up. Let there be light. There was light. That's a big, powerful idea of the Word of God. It's a big, powerful idea. And you need to understand that. The just of, the just of part of it shows the motive or the desire of God's sovereign will. I mean, very, time, very few chan chances do you get a chance to look into the mind of God when he does something. Right? I mean, he just speaks the word. Instead. But this is saying, the justice says, that, God, that God's desire was to hold the earth in a pattern in verse 2, wrapped it in darkness, wrapped it in water, and then wrapped it with the Holy Spirit. You saw that. Now he's ready to unpack it. He's ready to unpack it. He is ready to move forward with creating an earth that he can inhabit. Agreed? Because Tohu Wabohu of Genesis 1-2 says, Isaiah 40. 5.18 says that at this point it was uninhabitable. 
All right? And so what we're do what he's doing in day one is be beginning a chronological order of bringing the earth into where it can be inhabited because it was uninhabited. And the justive, which the English writers really did a magnificent job by picking that up, the English translators that put that lead in it got it. Moses, when he pinned it, Spent some time looking at that idea. In Psalms 33, 8 and 9, in a greater passage of looking at this subject matter of the sovereign will of God in creation about let there be light and there was light, the writer of Psalms 33 in verses 6 through 17 discuss it in pretty good lengths. I pulled out two verses. And it has the justice in it. See the word let? Circle that. That's, that's just it. Let all the earth fear the Lord. See? That's God's desire. That he's revealing his motive or his desire. Let all the earth fear the Lord. That's reverence him. Let all the inhabitants of the world Stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Eh? Where'd he get that idea from? Da, 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 da. Got it from day one. Hmm. Point three. The light of day one Watch this now, because this light is different than the solar system, agreed? Well, we don't get to the solar system until day four. You've got something going on with the earth that has nothing to do with the solar system. I mean, we can't even, I can't, I can't fathom that, can you? How, how is that possible that the, that earth could be in existence, and we don't know how long, because it's in an internal, it's in an eternal condition, you understand? Without a solar system. I mean, we can't even think that way, Miriam. Throw your calendar away and seasons and all that stuff, that's not there. Now watch this. Day one, the light, the light of day one, which is big subject matter, isn't it great? Light of day one is the reflected glory of the holiness of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all involved in this, in the creation story. The, the light. You say, Ron Adam, how do you know that? Well, I'll tell you how I know it. I know it because of John 8, 12. If I didn't know it for any other reason, Jesus is called the light of the world. And you know, that light is not a solar system light. That's the light of God. Come on now. He's not saying I'm the, I'm the, <laughs> I'm a solar system light. He's not talking about a solar system or a candle. He's talking about the light of God. The reflected glory. Jesus is the reflected glory of God. Listen to me. So is the Holy Spirit and dwells your body. So does the Holy Spirit that indwells your human body. It's the reflected glory of God. 1 Timothy 6.16 reminds us of that. God who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see in him be honor and eternal dominion. Psalms 104, 1 and 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Ain't it good you don't have to be in church to do that? You should be able to do it in church. We sang some great songs today about that should cause your soul to want to praise them. 
Willie, you can praise him anywhere. Huh? You can, you can be on your knees before your toilet throwing up and praise him. There are a lot of ways you can be on your knees, but, but haven't we all done that at some point or not? Well, maybe just me. <laughs> maybe just me. I'm letting secrets out here. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God. You are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. God wraps himself in light as a garment. Isn't that wonderful? You see, God was the absolute source or element of the light of day one. Do what? Yes. The light that Paul ran into on the road to Damascus in Acts 8, uh, 9 is absolutely what it was. Yeah. It's absolutely what it was. Thank you. Point number four. See, you can find it in the Bible if you look for it. Day one light will be the source of light for the first three days of the restoration of creation. These days, by theologians who study the Bible are called the days of God. There's nothing like them. There's nothing like them. In our pattern of days of the week, what would the first day be called? What's the first day of the week called? You know how many people don't know that. What do you think the average guy in the average street, I don't know about Moody. I haven't been with the average guy in the average street Moody yet. I have been with him at Cracker Barrel, though. What do you think? What day do you, of the, do you think, does he think the first day is? Monday, doesn't he? No, he's straight up and straight out. He thinks Monday is. Because he had a weekend. I guess. I don't know. But anyhow. So we have, we have Sunday, right? Then we have Monday and we have Tuesday, right? These are called days of God because there's no solar system. Agreed? There's no solar system. Take it day four. We do not have a solar system until day four. I, I help you people so much. I mean, you don't even have to study the Bible, do you? You just come here and study it with me. You should study it. Today. The light of day one will outlast the solar system light. Da 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 da. <laughs> This I really love. The light of day one and two will outlast the solar system of four, five, and six. <laughs> Is that not good? This will make it worth you coming to church today. Watch this. These are all found. And when you read 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13, it's going to tell you that. When you read Revelation 21, 23 through 25, and the 22nd chapter, verse 5, he's going to tell you that. When you read Isaiah 60, 19 through 20, he's going to tell you that. This solar system that we depend on for our life and our farming and everything else is going to be kaput. You know what kaput is? Okay. If, you're, if you have a little German in you, you do. Look, watch this. Listen to Peter in 2 Peter 3, 12 and 13. Looking for the coming day of God. Isn't that interesting? Calls it a day. Looking for the coming day of God. On account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which only righteousness dwells. <laughs> Listen to this. Revelation 21, 23. Talking about the new city in the new heaven and earth. And the city has no need of the sun or moon to shine upon it. 
for the glory of God will illuminate it, and the lamp is the Lamb. <laughs> no sun, no moon, no solar system, no stars. It'd just be the church. It'd be the stars. I don't know. How about this, Revelation 22, 5? There shall no longer be any night, look at the vocabulary of day one, and they shall not have need of light of a lamp nor the light of the sun, solar system, because the Lord God shall illuminate them and they shall reign forever and ever. You like that? See, we're, listen, the light we're going to have in eternity is the light of day one, two, and three. How about that? They teach that at Auburn. No. Hey, you ain't going to get any of that kind of information. You got to go to church to get this. You ain't going to get from Alabama or Auburn or Mississippi State. Right? They don't have to teach you that. Come to Grandpa's church, he'll teach it to you. I can't believe I'm a grandpa. I can't believe I'm a great grandpa. I can't believe I might be a great grandpa before great great or something. I don't know. Probably I'll never probably get a double great. And I don't know I would deserve it. Here here is Isaiah, and I'm going to close out today. Aren't you? Now you're happy you came today, aren't you? <laughs> Isaiah 60, 19 and 20. No longer. Say no longer. No. See how easy it was for me to get you to follow? Um, no longer will you have the sun for the light of day. Look at those vocabulary words. That interesting. We're still talking about them. Here we are about to go into the new heaven and new earth, and we're still using vocabulary out of the old one. <laughs> the word of God is forever, is it right? Huh? The word of God is forever. Forever. That's why you need to learn it now. No longer will you have the sun for the light of the day, nor for brightness will the moon give you light, but you will have the Lord for an everlasting light. And you, God, and you, God, for your glory. You, your sun will no longer set, nor will your moon wane, for you will have the Lord for an everlasting life, and the days of your mourning will be over. You know, he says it another way in, in Revelation. He says, no more crying, no more tears, no more mourning. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Let me tell you, where we're all headed it's going to be glorious. Be no solar system. We'll be back to what day we will be living in what was day one, two, and three. Isn't that interesting? The light of God. What can I, I just can't even imagine that. Paul couldn't either. When he got back, he wasn't permitted to talk about it, was he? Paul got a good look at the light of God. Right? what he experienced on the road to Damascus. He got a view of and never permitted to speak about it. Right? God gave him what? Thorn in the flesh. I don't even want to know what that was. Nah. All right. If it was, it was from a messenger of Satan, that's for sure, Gary. Well, let's uh, stand. We're going to have a word of prayer. Then we're going to do our pledge. And we're going to be to grab to the restaurant, aren't we? All right. Well, let's stand. Let's have prayer, and then we'll do our pledge. So our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for these that come our way today to study with us. What a, what a wonderful thing it is to open the Word of God and study it together to see the marvelous things that you have written and to pause and to reflect on them, to get a greater look at something. 
I mean, it's just amazing every time I study it how much more I learn from it. And one day we'll sit in the midst of day one and understand it all. That is a marvelous thing. In the meantime, Father, I am thankful for people who come and study with us. I pray that they will fall in love with the word of God. It is a light unto their path and will keep them from stumbling. It will give them the joy of the journey as their feet travel through this minefield of the world. We're thankful, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen.